name is Maria Miranda Maloney from Mouthfield Press in El Paso, Texas, in collaboration with the Smithsonian Latino Virtual Museum. We are celebrating the sixth annual Dia de los Muertos Festival. With us today is award-winning author Sandra Cisneros. She is live from the Smithsonian National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C., and live via the Virtual Museum's Ustream channel. Sandra is in the process of installing an altar with ofrendas dedicated to her mother, Elvira Cordero Cisneros. We are live from the University of Texas at El Paso, and this mobile broadcast series is a courtesy of AARP. Good afternoon, Sandra. Hi, Maria. How are you? How are you? I'm, I'm a little tired, but I'm hanging in there. But you're doing well. Yes. Well, Sandra, today we are at the University of Texas at El Paso, and we have very special guests Joining us is Maribel Villalba, director of the Centennial Museum and the Centennial Celebra Celebration. And we also have Dr. Gina Nunez, professor in the field of cultural anthropology. So here is uh, with us Maribel Villalba. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome virtually to the University of Texas at El Paso. Uh, this year, I'm very proud to announce that UTEP is celebrating its 100th anniversary. And for those of you who are not familiar, who are listening with UTEP, uh, we started as a very small mining school uh, here in West Texas with 27 students. And today, we are a nationally recognized research institution. We are consistently ranked as a top 10 university by Washington Monthly Magazine. So we are very happy to uh, share all of our accomplishments and everything about our centennial celebration. Part of that centennial celebration has allowed us to not only celebrate ourselves, but also to reflect on these wonderful partnerships that we've had. Uh, just last month, we had a wonderful event, the University Partners Convocation, where we uh, celebrated the partners that have helped shape UTEP into the university that it is today, and one of those coincidentally was the Smithsonian Institution. So we are very proud of this partnership with the Smithsonian Latino uh, Virtual Museum and the fact that we can do this Dia de los Muertos event for a second year in a row and hopefully for years to come. And more importantly, we are thrilled to share the stage with uh, Ms. Sandra Cisneros. And just on a personal note, uh, just back in 2002 when I was a reporter for the El Paso Times, I had the wonderful opportunity of interviewing Ms. Cisneros for the much-anticipated release of her book, Caramelo, mm -hmm. and to this day that remains one of my favorite stories that I, that I had published. Uh, so here we are 12 years later, and I'm able to say welcome, albeit virtually, to the University of Texas at El Paso. Well, thank you. I'm thrilled. <laughs> Thank you, then and now. Hi, Sandra. This is Gina Hi. Nunez. ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, gracias. Muy bien. Well, thank you very much for these, the space that you've created and carved out for your mother. I know altares are very meaningful in our culture and in this tradition of honoring those who have passed. And I'm wondering if you can share with you your best memories of your mother while she was living and how some of the items you've selected on the altar rec uh, help you remember her while she was still alive. Um, thank you for that question, and I need to say that uh, my mother and I had a difficult relationship. I don't want to idealize my mother or idealize my relationship with her. I was very difficult to her, and she was difficult with me, and uh, consequently we were each other's spiritual gurus. She took me places I didn't want to go and vice versa, but I think that I was very lucky in that I was in the room when she crossed over. And I was there to help her to cross the way she helped me to cross into this life. And I got to see a side of her that I had never seen until that moment. And uh, my mom was a, 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 a tremendous force. She was a, a woman who was decisive and, and quick with words and would say what she thought and uh, throw words like knives, maiming innocent and guilty all around her. And uh, so with the end of, and I was very really sensible, you know, so I was a very different kind of person than my mom. Uh, but she opened the path for me, and I feel as if I was, uh, uh, I was given the opportunity to be in that space when she crossed over from this life into the other. And I got to see her without her disguise, without her bravado, without her... Um, 
outer shell that shields our true heart. I got to see her tender heart in that moment. I'm going to uh, speak about that in, on Saturday. And getting a glimpse of my mother's true spirit before you know she covered it with rage or disappointment or with fear allowed me to understand my mother for the very first time in a way I had never understood her in her life. Who was my mother before she became my mother? Who was that woman who had her own dreams and her own desires before she had to take care of us instead of her, her uh, uh, principal needs? I wanted to explore that and that's how I created this altar, that's how I created the essays that came as a consequence of her death and the book have you seen Marie is based also on that discovery. So this is me making my peace with my mom because many daughters, we have very difficult relationships with our mother. We don't understand our mother. Our mother never understood us. And then if you're lucky, you get this moment when you see into their soul and you have to grow up and become a little more generous, a little more compassionate and make your peace. And that's what happened to me. So many of us that follow your work, what do you think has been the role technology has played in your life and your craft with connecting with your readers and having accessibility to our lives as we are now being accessible to your life? Oh, well, um, I haven't given that, given that thought very much consideration because I'm a woman of the last millennia. I still can't figure out my iPhone. So, <laughs> I don't really know how, how technology, except that it befuddles me. Um, I, I don't, I mean, on the one hand, I benefit from it, the keeping connection with others and editing process uh, being uh, much more expedient. But on the other hand, I'm always fighting it. I, I, I get frustrated that I don't have my typewriter. I'm very frustrated that uh, I constantly have to update my computer. And I get frustrated I have to ask other people to explain things for me because I still don't know how to use my computer. Hello, Ms. Sandra. My name is Claudia Ley. I'm a student here at UTEP. My question for you is regarding what is the role of water as a, in ofrendas? And how does water help us connect with our ancestors? You know, that's a good question. Maybe we should need to ask uh, people that are viewing because uh, I didn't know we had to put water and salt on the altars until uh, la señora que me limpia la casa me lo dijo. My, my housekeeper, Juanita Chavez, when she saw my altar, she said, Oh, le hace falta sal y agua. And I asked, Juanita, ¿por qué? Yo no sé. Yo no sé. So uh, everyone tells me in Mexico, I live in Mexico now, and I ask people about the sal y agua, and the only thing they tell me is que los difuntos tienen mucho sed. The dead are thirsty. And salt, I don't know if it's our lágrimas, but I'm still asking, so maybe someone out there can tell us the significance of the water and salt. I did bring a water glass this time so that I can pour water, and I did bring salt from my house in Mexico. Uh, so maybe someone who's wiser than we are can remind us why those elements are on the altar. Okay. I just wanted to share with you that right now I'm working on this project called Waterbound, which is based on our connection to water, especially here in the frontera. And our altar is going to consist of, uh, well, it's going to be in honor of immigrants who have, who have passed trying to get to this other side. So any suggestions, any ideas that you think would be great to incorporate into this? Well, I think it's very good to get the people that you're honoring to put their contribution in. So as the immigrants themselves, I think that they would have a lot to teach us. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time.